So, I'm a fan of My Hero Academia or Boku no Hero Academia and I was watching it and uh, I really liked the UA sports jacket. So you know, I looked up where to get them and they don't cost that much. But the thing is, is that I get really cold easily. So I also like long sleeve jackets and uh, I don't want to go and buy another jacket. But that, you know, that's just me and my preference. So I thought, what happens if I could go and make a jacket that could be both the UA jacket from the anime and a jacket that I could wear just casually around the house? The first thing I did was draw up a plan that had clasps at the base of the hood and the sleeves. Using two hoodie jackets I already owned, I used them to go and create a pattern. For the materials, I used white poplin, red bed sheets, synthetic blue fabric and another blue fabric to act as a lining. I then laid the synthetic fabric on the ground, folding it in half and pinning it at the edge. This was to ensure that the fabric laid out flat without any lumps or bumps that could distort the shape of the pattern. Then I pinned the pattern onto the folded fabric, pinning the piece for the back and the waistband on the fold. Then I cut all the pieces out. So my phone died, but all I really did was cut out the same pattern pieces with the other blue fabric, excluding the collar. I then pinned the decorative patterns onto the white poplin. And please ignore the sleeve pattern, I didn't realise that it was wrong until I looked at reference photos a week later. But other than that, I cut the pieces out. I then took the sleeve patterns and the hood piece, and I pinned and cut them from the red fabric. For the red pieces, I overlined them. I used this very old set squares or width to trace around. It equated to around half an inch, but if you are doing this, you could do it with less. After cutting out the pieces, I ran into a slight dilemma. As you can see in the camera, the white poplin was quite see-through. But by cutting another set of pieces that could be laid on top of each other, the problem was fixed. Using the largest stitch length, I went and sewed on the seam allowance or on a pair of decorative pattern pieces. So I tried to go and sew them both together and then flip them inside out. But as you can see, the fabric still shows through it. So. I think I'll try my original idea. I took another pair of pieces and ran them through the sewing machine as I did before. And instead of flipping the pieces inside out, I folded them back along the sewed edge. Then sewed on the fold to keep them in place. with the pieces looking like this afterwards. New day. First things first, I'm gonna go and iron these down. So iron them down, I did. After being unsatisfied with the ironing job, I unpicked the basting stitch and ironed down the pieces again. And I was much happier as it ironed out more flatter and smoother than the one with the basting stitch. Then I trimmed the red fabric and did the same process that I did with the white fabric. Then I pinned the red and the white pattern sleeve pieces on top of each other. With the standard stitch length, I went and sewed both of the pieces together. With all of the decorative pieces prepared, I took the back piece, the pocket pieces, the front pieces, and the sleeve pieces. And first pinned the decorative pieces onto both sleeve pieces to get the correct alignment. I then pinned it together and tried it on to see if the pattern piece was sitting in a place I wanted. Then I pinned the U-shaped pieces to the front and back of the jacket, making sure the front pieces roughly aligned with the back. 
Afterwards, I stitched the pieces down onto the blue fabric, making sure to sew as close to the edge of the decorative piece as possible. I then used the seam ripper to go and cut all the loose threads off. Taking both blue pieces for the pockets, I pinned and sewed around the outermost edges. After sewing, cutting the corner edges off, making it easier for corners to poke out and lay flat when it's folded inside out. I pinned the edges of the pocket so it remains level and top stitched only the side of the pocket that acts as the opening. Afterwards, I took the A pieces and pinned them to the pocket piece before sewing them down. Now we take a break for a bobbin refill interlude. With the pattern pieces now sewed onto the pocket piece, I laid them onto the front jacket pieces. Then I pinned it down, making sure the hem of the pocket piece matched with the hem of the jacket piece. When sewing it down, I sewed only the white fabric not sewn to the pocket. I then sewed the top and side of the pocket piece down. I did so by using a twin needle to add a little extra flair. I had initially sewn the A pattern where the pocket piece is, but it looked nicer without it. It was also proved inconsequential to the integrity of the overall pocket. With the pockets done, I overlocked the front and the back pieces of the jacket at the shoulders and sides. Making sure the pattern pieces were aligned, I pinned down the shoulders and sewed them together. It's important for the patterns to be aligned so it doesn't look disjointed when opened up. I then ironed the seams open. I then spread the main piece open and pinned the top part of the sleeve to the cut. I then sewed and overlocked at the pinned edge. I folded over the sleeve and matched the seams before pinning the sleeve and sides of the jacket together. I then ran the whole thing through the sewing machine. With the jacket sem I put together, I tried it on to see how it fit. Moving on to the bottom half of the sleeve, I pinned the sides together and sewed them down. I did the same with the red and blue hood pieces before turning it inside out and ironing the seam open. I essentially did the same thing with the lining fabric. And because the fabric I'm using is stretchy, I forwent the sewing machine and just used the overlocker. I didn't show this on camera, but I had cut out cuffs earlier. With them, I pinned and sewed the sides together. I laid the cuffs out to iron the seams open. And this, kids, is why you should check the fabric you are working with. I burned the hole in the fabric. Because synthetic fabric melts with intense heat. So I tried again, turning the temperature of the iron down, and luckily this time I didn't melt the fabric. So with the cuffs and the bottom half of the sleeve for both the outer and inner lining, I pinned the cuff to the outer sleeve right sides together and sewed. I lost the footage for this part so please bear with me. I took the lining and pinned and sewed it along the cuff right sides together that has the front side sewed opposite to it. Then I folded the lining into the front sleeve until half the cuff was folded. Then I top stitched the cuff at its base and hem to keep the lining from sliding out. It's the next day and I cut a strip for the top of the sleeve. This is because folding it over was too bulky for me. I cut off the original hem and pinned the ends together before base stitching so the front and lining layers would be easier to work with. I sewed the ends of the fabric strip I cut out earlier before pinning it at the top of the sleeve. And then I sewed them together. Afterwards, I cut the extra fabric off from the seam. I then folded the strip of fabric over. 
I sewed at the base and the hem of the sleeve from the right side to keep the stitches neat and tidy. Then I set the sleeves to the side. With the main part of the jacket, I overlocked the waist hem. I then took the lining piece and base stitched along the waist hem. I did the same for the sleeves. I did the same thing to the bottom half of the sleeve as the top. However, instead of folding the stripper over itself, I folded it completely under the sleeve and sewed it down. See, here's what it's theoretically looking like. Though this sleeve protrudes out quite a bit, and you can see it quite predominantly, hopefully the clasps will hide those away more. Ignore the mess back there, but I just temporarily pinned the sleeve on with some safety pins and yeah, you can notice the line a little bit, but it's coming together. But from the mirror, it's a less noticeable than it is on the camera. So it's the next day and uh, I've made a few additions to the jacket while the camera was off. The first was overlocking the opening of the jacket. And the second was adding a waistband. This was top stitched at the base and hem with the lining folded inwards so the seam didn't show. This is the zipper I chose. As well as being half my age, it was filthy. But the other options were either not the right colour or were way too long to work with. I put the zipper in a detergent solution. Then I redid the turtleneck collar because it was too short. And this time, I cut it on the bias. Then I ironed it. With fusible interfacing, roughly the same size of the collar, I fuse them together with the iron. FYI, the glue is a pain to scrape off the iron, so use a cover and do not do what I am doing here. This has been your local PSA. I eventually did put a cover on and continued to iron until the layers were fully sticking to each other. With the excess interfacing, I just chopped it off. I folded and pinned the collar in half right sides facing each other and sewed on the sides leaving the bottom length open to allow me to turn the collar inside out. Again making sure that the corners poked through. I then folded the bottom edge inward to create a nice finish. And sewed along the entire perimeter of the collar. With the hood pieces, I took the lining and the red piece and pinned them along the edges. Overlocking all the sides so it acted as a single piece. I also overlocked the sides of the front piece. I measured an inch from the edge and folded the front piece accordingly. I then marked 3 inches from the bottom of the hood and half an inch from the side. This was to get the placement of the buttonhole. I then pinned the front and lining piece right sides together at the base of the hood before sewing it down and folding it over so the right sides were facing. With the overhang of the front piece, I folded it over the lining. I decided I didn't like the overlocking showing, so I pinned ribbon over it. I pinned and top stitched the base of the hood then sewed the ribbon down on both sides, making sure the fold remained hollow and the buttonhole could perform as an entrance. I took the zipper out from its overnight bath and dried it. It was so much nicer than before that you wouldn't believe that it was the same zipper. So now I've got the zipper all washed and cleaned, I'm going to go and pin it to the opening of the jacket and I'll do it while the zipper is still zipped up so then I can get the correct alignment so then it doesn't look all uneven at the end. I used a ruler to mark out the seam allowance. This was so I could fold the opening back and pin the folded edge right up to the teeth of the zipper.
Now that I've gone and pinned the opening, with the patterns relatively lining up, I can now unzip the zipper and I'm going to go and baste stitch along the zipper so then I can also line the inside of the zipper, which I haven't done yet. With the front pieces pinned to the zipper, I unzipped it. Then I secured the pinned pieces using a base stitch done by hand. It turned out like this. Okay, so here's the jacket after the basting. I did the basting on the front and then I also did it at the back. The tops of it are very like bunched up and they're not very professional, but neither am I. So I'm gonna go and sew this down with a zipper foot and then take out. I was supposed to say and take out the stitching, but here's me sewing it together. Once it had gone through the sewing machine, I used the seam ripper to take the basting stitch out. Quick tip, to make the removal easier, baste stitch or where the sewing machine won't run through. Which I didn't do here. I moved on to pinning the turtleneck to the collar of the jacket. And I pinned it about half an inch from the collar's edge. As the camera shows, the turtleneck doesn't come all the way up to the zipper as it would have affected the convertible aspect. Then I sewed the turtleneck down from the bottom length as if I were doing a top stitch. I tried it on and the collar was uneven. So I ripped it off and sewed it on again. The pieces were all set and all I needed was something to hold them together. These are sew-on snap fasteners. I initially used nine five millimeter fasteners where the hood would join. And six seven millimeter fasteners for each sleeve. I started with the stud part of the fastener and sewed them to the bottom edge of the hood. They were sewn with relatively even spacing in between them. Then I took the socket and sewed them to the collar of the jacket behind the turtleneck. Before doing so, I marked the collar with chalk so the spacing of the sockets would line up with the studs on the hood. Then I sewed the sockets on in the same way I did their stud counterpart. It's the next day and I have gone and put the fasteners, certain fasteners, onto both the sleeves and the hood. One thing to note about the hood is that I did add an additional five snap fasteners so then the hood would actually sit more nicely along the upper seam. I also added a marker onto one sleeve so they can be matched with the correct pair as the sleeves have slightly differing alignments when paired incorrectly. The jacket is almost complete, lastly needing a drawstring. I was too lazy so I used a shoelace. Though I wanted a white shoelace, I only had red and black. However, I used a safety pin to feed the shoelace through the hood. And that's the jacket completed! If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. This project is something that was just an idea that I had in my head and is something I had so much fun creating and doing. And I really liked how it turned out. The connecting of the sleeves still irks me a little, but I think that's just a me thing. I also saw in the comments of my tough video that people would make the cosplay. So if you decide to follow the tumultuous process to make this jacket, please send photos to me on Instagram to at stitchwitchery. I would love to see it. And if you would like me to do a video detailing just the canon jacket, please leave a comment down below. Love you guys lots and don't lose your sleeves.